So, welcome to the second screencast that we're doing on energy security. And we're going to start off today by looking at this image. This is an image of the Russian flag being planted on the bed of the Arctic Ocean. Quite an odd thing to do by the Russian nation, but it was done as effectively a geopolitical manoeuvre to gain territory. Let me just show you a short video so you can get the un basic understanding of what this is about. Here is perhaps the most bizarre, bizarre story we've heard about in a while. Staking claim to the North Pole. Russia is making a very bold move, planting its flag on the Arctic seafloor. It's a decision that has many nations up in arms, and Fox's Dana Lewis has the details. Two deep water Russian submarines resurface after a historic and highly controversial nine hour dive at the North Pole. The research team celebrating the equivalent of what one of the Russians likened to an underwater version of a moon landing. But this was also a Kremlin backed publicity stunt designed to formally lay claim to half the Arctic seabed, by some estimates, 25% of the world's oil and gas reserves. I think a large portion of it is, is a public. And there's the key issue. So today's lesson is going to be put looking at gaining access to oil reserves in environmentally sensitive areas. Obviously at the moment the technology doesn't exist to drill in the Arctic but at some point it might and therefore we need to consider what the impacts of this are going to be. So the objective of today's lesson is to examine the costs and benefits of exploiting new areas and resources in economic human, so social, political and environmental terms. So we're going to be looking at the energy insecurity and environmental threats that these areas face. We're going to do this by looking at two areas. The first of our areas which we're going to study is this. This is the region of Alberta in Canada and as you can see it is a quite stunningly beautiful area. It's uh, covered in large areas of boreal forest and is home to many rare breeds and species and as a consequence part of it is UNESCO um, wildlife reserves. However, it also contains vast amounts of rare resources. Okay, This is once what the area looked like. So on the left hand side you can see area of trees which has started to be cleared, a bit like the Amazon rainforest is at times. However, when we click on, this is what's become of this area on the other side. They've cleared huge areas of forest, okay? Um, and this is all over the Can Can Alberta region. And they're doing this for one reason. And the key reason is this. Underneath this area is huge amounts of tar. Now this tar and bitumen contains oil in effectively a solid form and what they do is effectively they open cast mine for oil, a bit like one would do to um, dig for coal. This is being done here in the same. Now a lesson ago you looked at energy security and risk and looking at the issues behind energy in, in the United States. This is North America's solution to these problems. This is in Alberta, there is also areas of America which have um, tar sands and gas shale as well and it's being used as a solution to lower the security dependency on areas like the Middle East, on areas like Venezuela. Now, what we need to consider in geography is the impacts of this and so what, we, what I'd like you to do is two things. One, you can go and look at what look at this video. Um, this video is a little bit biased, but it's from a reliable source um, due to the TED conferences. These are a large scale global conferences. This is 17 minutes of a uh, video. At times it's a little bit dramatic and you can skip through it, but what you need to think about is what are the impacts of this uh, of drilling for this Canadian tar sand. Now this video is going to look at largely the negative consequences. However, some of these consequences can be positive as well. This extract here comes from the Edexcel booklet that was released in January 2011. 
This kind of begins to highlight, yes, some of the negative issues, but also why it's being done as well. If you consider here, the Canadian tar sands which, I was, which we're looking at have an economic value of 1. trillion barrels of oil. Now, bearing in mind global supplies, that presents a huge part and a huge opportunity for securing energy security futures in the North American region. The USA also has oil shale. Okay, this again, they have huge amounts of reserves. But again, it's going to have significant impact, and one of the biggest impacts that you have to be aware of is that to extract a lot of these resources, they have to heat it to very extreme temperatures. That makes it very expensive to produce, but it also has significant impacts on the environment as well, including polluting water sources. Now, this is significant synoptically for the future when we look at water security in the future. So. What we'd like to do, you to do is look at a couple of things. In your green textbook, which you should have at home, you'll find information on tar sands. First off, identify all the players involved in mining tar sands. Now you've just done an essay on players, so this should be relatively straightforward to identify these players. Consider the roles of these players and how they both agree and disagree with each other. Because some of these players support each other, particularly think about governments and TNCs, but then think about environmentalists and locals who may live in this area. Now locals are a likely an issue because some of them are going to be for this and some of them are going to be against it. And then thirdly, what's the significance of exploiting these tar sands? Why is it being done? Because it's clearly a developing and growing process, particularly if you watch that video. There are six new areas which you can look at. Now, I've mentioned the textbook for you. One of the other useful sources of information that you will find is on the National Geographic website. There is a section which is looking at Canadian oil sands. Okay, and if you just type into Google Canadian oil sands in National Geographic, you can find a huge amount of information on here. In particular, there's information here about how it's extracted and its actual value as well. Now, there's quite a lot of information here because it's eight pages long. It's significant this bit. It is the world's dirtiest oil. Again, beware of bias in this article. So if you can so you can start to look at the energy security of the tar sands. There is a second area which is important. Now I mentioned synopticity earlier and water security. There's also significant links to biodiversity, which is going to be the third topic which we're looking at over the course of this year. Now there's a second area which is incredibly oil rich, which America are beginning to rely on. And this is up in um, Alaska which is part of, and we're looking at the Arctic National Wildlife Reserve. Now the Arctic National Wildlife Reserve is an area of permafrost that should look like this. Okay, this is what this area should look like. Now, it's very beautiful, it's untouched, it's clearly unspoilt. And America have so far designated this entire area for oil extraction and consumption. However, there is also a lot of oil in this area as well. And there is significant pressure on the US government at the moment to extract these areas. And it means that the area will begin to look like this. Okay? Now, already in this area, and we've mentioned this already, is a pipeline running down from Prudhoe Bay all the way down through Alaska. And it goes all the way down eventually to Anchorage, where the oil is then put onto tankers and um, sent around the world, but mainly to North America. There's also a pipeline which runs down along here, down into Canada. So you can get they can get the oil and gas around very, very easily from this area. However, due to it being frozen most of the time, it has significant environmental risks that you need to be aware of. Now if we just move on a slide, what we'd like you to do is consider the costs and benefits of drilling for oil in the Arctic. You will find this in the textbook. However, if you want to read further into this, there is a very good link over here which looks at the Arctic Refuge and it's based on the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge and it looks at oil drilling in this area. To find this, all I did was Google 
Arctic National Wildlife Refuge and Oil, and it was the second link down. Okay, and this begins to allow you to explore a how much oil is there, b the environmental value of the area, and c the potential impacts of the gas. Now you need to be making notes on this and making sure you have an understanding of this area. Hopefully this goes some way to aiding your understanding of why they're drilling in the area. And the thing which we really need to consider by the end of this is whether should North America rely on Canada's tar sands to provide an alternative source of oil or should they be looking for alternatives to fossil fuels. And I think the thing you need to consider is the first topic, the first lecture, the first lesson of this unit, we looked at a video by Barack Obama saying he was going to look for alternative sources. Now one thing you might need to consider is how hard are they looking when they have all this oil at their disposable which they can get for a cheaper a cheaper cost than potentially developing these alternative fuel sources. So that ends the second of our screen grabs and hopefully what this can t will allow you to do is start to explore further these issues of energy security.